The bridge of the Terran Alliance battlecruiser Dauntless hummed with activity as Captain Jared Briggs strode onto the command deck. His piercing blue eyes scanned the crew pit below, ensuring every station was primed for combat. Status report, he barked, taking his place in the central chair. All systems online and ready, sir, his XO responded crisply. We're holding strategic position Zeta-9 awaiting your command. Briggs nodded curtly. Bring up the mission briefing on the main viewer. The massive screen flickered to life, displaying a revolving holographic emblem. A crimson talon clutching a planet. The symbol of the Galactic Federation they now opposed. Listen up, people, Briggs's voice carried through the bridge speakers. For too long, we've allowed the Federation's aggression and arrogance to go unchecked. Their policy of forcibly boarding and seizing any vessel they deem unknown is a violation of sovereign rights. He paused, eyes narrowing. And when the Federation cruiser protector tried pulling that shit on one of our scout ships, they paid the ultimate price for their hubris. A hush fell over the bridge crew. The protector incident had been the catalyst that finally ignited humanity's fury. We hit them hard that day and sent a clear message. Do not fuck with Earth's territories or her people. But those arrogant bastards didn't listen. Briggs slammed a fist on the arm of his chair. Instead of standing down, they chose to fortify this outpost as a strategic stronghold. The view screen shifted to display schematics of a heavily armored Federation station. Our mission is simple. Take that outpost by any means necessary and make it clear to the Federation that this space now belongs to the Terran Alliance. Briggs rose from his chair, squaring his broad shoulders. But this is more than just some territorial pissing match, people. This is about restoring humanity's rightful place among the stars. For too long, we've been dismissed as upstart primitives by the alien powers that be. His voice took on a thunderous cadence. Well, those days are over. From this day forth, the Terran Alliance will be recognized as the preeminent force in this goddamn galaxy. A roar of approval shook the bridge. Briggs allowed himself a feral grin. Weapons, get me a target lock on that outpost primary generator. Let's give those alien fucks a taste of human firepower. The deck tilted slightly as the Dauntless's massive rail cannons swiveled into battery. On the view screen, targeting reticules zeroed in on the Federation station's glowing power core. Fire at will, Briggs ordered. Twin lances of superheated metal streaked from the Dauntless's forward batteries, slamming into the outpost shields with titanic force. The Federation's defensive barriers flickered and died as successive volleys found their mark. Breach their reactor core, the captain commanded. I want that station a smoldering wreck by the time we're done. As the Dauntless continued its merciless bombardment, Briggs felt a surge of vicious satisfaction. This was just the opening salvo. The Galactic Federation was about to learn a brutal lesson about the fury of an unstoppable human force. Explosions rocked the Federation outpost as the Terran Alliance battle group poured withering fire into its crippled superstructure. On the bridge of the Dauntless, Captain Briggs watched the conflagration with grim satisfaction. Status of the enemy station, he demanded. Their reactor containment has been breached, his tactical officer reported. Mass evacuations are underway, but they're taking heavy casualties. Briggs nodded curtly. Target their escape pods and launch bays. I don't want a single soul getting off that station alive. The crew tensed at the ruthless order, but none dared question it. They had all seen the aftermath of the Protector incident. The brutalized bodies of their shipmates strewn across the wreckage. The Federation had struck first and paid dearly for it. Now it was the Terran's turn to deliver retribution. The dauntless, massive rail cannon swiveled with lethal precision, spitting hyper-velocity rounds into the stream of fleeing escape pods. Fiery blossoms erupted amidst the Federation craft as they were systematically obliterated. On the main viewer, the once formidable outpost burned like a funeral pyre, its superstructure crumpling under the relentless barrage. Briggs watched the display with an impassive mask, even as screams of the dying echoed over the comm channels. Cease fire, he finally ordered once the last escape pod had winked out of existence. Send in boarding parties to retrieve any salvageable technology and intelligence. His XO looked up sharply. Sir, you want to search the wreckage? Of course, Briggs replied flatly. We can't let a single scrap of Federation data fall into the wrong hands. Not after the price we paid to take this station. 
Memories of the protector flitted through his mind. The frantic screams, the sickening crunch of bodies being crushed by blast doors. His people had fought like cornered wolves to survive that nightmare, and in the end, they had been forced to resort to the unthinkable to escape, detonating the protector's warp core in a blinding flash of antimatter annihilation. An act of desperation to deny the Federation any chance of studying human technology. Briggs's jaw tightened at the recollection. Never again would his people be caught unprepared by alien aggression. This outpost would be scoured clean of anything that could give the Federation an advantage. Make it happen, XO, he ordered. I want that station stripped to the bulkheads by the time we're done here. As his crew scrambled to follow his commands, Briggs allowed his gaze to drift outwards towards the inky vastness. Somewhere out there, the Federation's core world spun, bloated, complacent, and utterly unprepared for the reckoning that was coming. A feral grin split his face as he imagined those arrogant alien bastards, reeling in shock and fear at the onslaught of human might. After centuries of being dismissed as a backward species, humanity would finally take its rightful place among the stars, and the Terran Alliance would be leading the charge every step of the way. The smoke had barely cleared from the smoldering ruins of the Federation outpost when Captain Briggs summoned his senior officers to the Dauntless Strategy Room. Hollow maps flickered to life, displaying the Alliance's next objectives, a string of heavily fortified Federation colony worlds. Our decisive strike here sent shockwaves through the Federation's ranks, Briggs began. They can no longer dismiss humanity as a primitive upstart to be trifled with. We've proven our military might and technological superiority. Murmurs of pride rippled through the assembled officers. Cracking the outpost defenses had been a hard-fought victory, but one that showcased human tenacity and ingenuity. However, we cannot allow this momentum to stall, the captain continued. Recon has identified these three colony worlds as critical military production hubs for the Federation. If we can cripple their ability to reinforce and rearm, it will go a long way towards bringing this conflict to a decisive conclusion in our favor. His exo studied the hollow maps intently. Their defensive arrays are formidable, but I believe we can punch through with a concerted attack, provided we coordinate our firepower and employ strategic target saturation. Briggs nodded approvingly. Precisely. But we must also be prepared for the eventuality of civilian casualties. His expression grew solemn. Unlike the Federation, we do not make a habit of subjugating and seizing the assets of sovereign species through force. Our aim is not conquest, but self-preservation. The words hung heavy in the air. For too long, humanity had endured the Federation's policy of forcible technology seizures and strong-arm tactics under the guise of ensuring galactic peace. No more. If civilian populations are caught in the crossfire as we dismantle the Federation's war machine, it will be an immense tragedy, Briggs said gravely, but one we must be prepared to accept as the harsh reality of the stand we are taking. He met each officer's gaze steadily. Our people have suffered long enough under the Federation's boot heel. This is our chance to secure the freedom and respect we deserve among the stars to carve out our own destiny as the masters of our fate. A chorus of nods and murmurs answered him. The Terran officers were resolved, their idealism of protecting civilian life tempered by the cold pragmatism of waging an existential war. Very well, Briggs said finally. Prepare your crews and make ready to jump on my mark. We're going to hit these colonies hard and fast before they can reinforce their defenses. The Federation's reign of injustice ends here. As his officers moved to carry out their orders, Briggs turned his gaze outwards. The colony worlds glittered defiantly in the distance, utterly unaware of the reckoning heading their way. There would likely be civilian casualties, innocent lives lost in the cosmic upheaval humanity was unleashing. But the alternative, meekly surrendering to the Federation's heavy-handed oppression for all eternity, was a fate far worse than any temporary tragedy. Humanity's freedom had to be bought with the currency of blood and fury and the Terran Alliance would pay that price without flinching. The Terran Alliance battle group dropped out of FTL like a lance piercing the void, their armored hulls gliding silently towards the first of the Federation colony worlds. On the bridge of the Dauntless, Captain Briggs watched the tactical displays intensely as his ships fanned out into attack formation. Status of enemy defenses, he demanded. Substantial, sir, his tactical officer reported grimly. Long-range sensor sweeps are detecting multiple planetary shielding nodes 
and an array of heavy orbital gun batteries. Briggs's jaw tightened fractionally. The Federation had clearly fortified these colonies in anticipation of potential conflicts, but their defenses would not be enough to halt the Terran juggernaut. Concentrate all forward batteries on those shield generators, he ordered. I want them cycled down before our first wave hits their defensive line. Kinetic bombardment teams calculate simultaneous orbital trajectories and await my command to saturate those gun platforms. A tense silence fell over the bridge as the Dauntless's gunners brought their fearsome rail cannon batteries online. Briggs could taste the metallic edge of anticipation as his crew prepared to unleash hell. Incoming broadcast from the colony, sir, his comms officer warned. They're requesting we disengage and state our intentions immediately. The captain's lips peeled back in a wolfish grin. Then by all means, put them through. I'd be delighted to clarify our intentions. A Federation ambassador appeared on the main view screen, his alien features twisted in an arrogant sneer. Unidentified vessels, you are encroaching on sovereign Federation territory. Disengage immediately or you will be fired upon. Briggs rose from his command chair, squaring his shoulders as he fixed the alien with an icy glare. This is Captain Jared Briggs of the Terran Alliance battlecruiser Dauntless. We don't recognize your territorial claims over this system or its colonies. The ambassador's sneer deepened. Then you are fools as well as primitives. This region has been under the authority and protection of the Galactic Federation for over five centuries. We will not allow some upstart race of violent simians to threaten what is rightfully. Can it, squid face? Briggs cut him off with blistering contempt. Your authority over this region and its people is at an end. For too long, humanity has endured your oppressive policies and dismissive arrogance towards our ascendance as a spacefaring race. He stabbed an accusing finger at the view screen. No more. The Terran Alliance has been forged to shatter your unjust dominion over the stars, starting with these colonies that you've been using as little more than resources to feed your war machine. The alien ambassador's eyes widened in shock and outrage. You dare threaten the sovereign territory of the Federation? Have you learned nothing from your previous transgressions? A feral grin split Briggs's face. Oh, we've learned plenty from our last encounter, alien. Specifically, that the Federation's military prowess is a hollow sham, barely covering its core of arrogance and frailty. He turned towards his weapons crews. Target the shield generators and open fire. Let's show these bastards what real human firepower looks like. As the Dauntless's rail cannons thundered to life, Briggs locked eyes with the sputtering ambassador. The age of human subjugation is over. From this day forth, we choose our own destiny among the stars. Brilliant lances of superheated metallic slugs lashed out from the Terran battle group, slamming into the colony world's orbital shielding with brutal force. On the bridge of the Dauntless, the deck bucked and shuddered as the mighty railgun cycled through successive barrages. Deflector shields at 60% and falling, Briggs's tactical officer called out over the thunderous concussions. The Federation gunners are returning fire. As if on cue, the view screens flickered with incoming ordnance, clouds of ballistic munitions and energy lances reaching out from the colony's defensive batteries. Briggs watched impassively as the Terran ship's point defense turrets burst into action, swatting down the retaliatory barrage with calculated precision. Our kinetic bombardment solutions are calculated and locked on, Captain, the weapons officer stated. Give the word and we'll plaster those gun platforms into oblivion. Briggs was silent for a beat, his eyes locked on the image of the Federation colony. The massive habitat domes and civilian population centers clearly visible amid the military installations. This was the line they were about to cross. Open warfare against the Federation's civilian industrial complex that would undoubtedly lead to widespread casualties and devastation. A necessity in their struggle for freedom, but one that still carried a moral weight. His crew watched him intently, awaiting the fateful order. Briggs knew that whatever call he made, they would follow without hesitation. Such was the bond of loyalty and trust between human warriors. Decision made, he straightened in his command chair. Commence the bombardment, prioritize taking out those gun batteries, but don't be overly discriminating. Any target that threatens our ships is fair game from here on out. A chorus of aye-ayes echoed across the bridge 
as the kinetic crews input the firing solutions. Briggs braced himself as the deck heaved underfoot once more, the mighty mass drivers releasing their deadly payloads in a thunderous ripple. On the view screens, the orbital battle arena was abruptly obscured by roiling clouds of atmospheric debris as the Terran bombardment tore into the Federation's defensive installations. Turbo laser emplacements and railgun batteries alike were scoured from their hardpoints in searing blossoms of annihilation. Briggs allowed himself a grim smile as the last of the colony's orbital weapons fell silent. They had decisively crippled the outer defensive sphere in one concerted blow. Now the path was clear to dismantle the Federation's industrial and military might on the surface. Concentrate all batteries on those shipyards and fabrication complexes, he ordered. I want them reduced to so much molten scrap and don't try to avoid collateral damage. That's an inevitability at this point. His tactical crews hurried to input the new targeting data, but Briggs could see the pained expressions on some of their faces. No matter how steeled they were as warriors, deliberately inflicting civilian casualties went against every moral fiber of their being. He couldn't blame them. Terran military doctrine had been steeped in the ideals of protecting non-combatants for centuries, but those rules no longer applied in their existential struggle against the Federation's tyranny. You all knew this day was coming, Briggs said, his voice carrying over the comm channels. The Federation has forced our hand by denying us our sovereign rights and attempting to subjugate humanity through force. He rose from his chair, squaring his shoulders as he addressed his crew. What's about to happen here is a tragedy, one we will all carry for the rest of our lives. But it is a necessary tragedy to secure the future we're fighting for. The captain's eyes burned with conviction. We are the vanguard of humanity's ascension among the stars, the ones who will shatter the Federation's unjust dominion and carve out our rightful destiny as masters of our own fate. He stabbed a finger at the view screens displaying the colony world. What happens here today will echo through the ages as the turning point where we broke our chains and embraced our role as the preeminent force in this galaxy. A rumble of bloodthirsty approval rolled through the bridge crew. Briggs could see the doubt and hesitation melting away, replaced by that unbreakable human resolve that had carried their species through countless struggles. With a decisive nod, he turned back to the tactical crews. Fire at will. Lay this colony to waste and leave nothing but ashes for the Federation to find. As the Dauntless's main batteries thundered back to life, raining apocalyptic destruction down upon the colony world, Briggs allowed his expression to harden into a mask of merciless determination. There would be sacrifices and tragedy along the way, but the path to humanity's liberation among the stars would be paved in the fires of their fury. The age of human subjugation was over. The Terran Alliance had arrived to claim its destiny, in glory or ruin. Fiery contrails streaked across the colony world's atmosphere as the Terran bombardment tore into its surface. On the bridge of the Dauntless, the view screens displayed a horrifying panorama of devastation. Entire cities obliterated, manufacturing complexes reduced to smoldering craters. Captain Briggs watched the destruction impassively, his expression a stony mask concealing the turmoil churning within. He had known this day would extract a heavy toll, but seeing the scale of death and ruin they had unleashed was still a gut punch. Orbital defenses have been neutralized, his tactical officer reported, the usual hint of satisfaction absent from her tone. We're no longer meeting any resistance from the surface. A small mercy, Briggs thought grimly. At least they wouldn't be compounding the civilian tragedy by having to grind through organized military opposition. Commence ground operations, he ordered. I want search and salvage teams to secure any intact data repositories and industrial assets. Leave no stone unturned. His XO stepped forward, a muscle twitching in his jaw. And the surviving population centers, sir? What are your orders regarding them? The question hung in the air like a guillotine blade. Briggs knew the ethical ramifications, the line they would be crossing if he gave the order to exterminate the colony civilians. But he also knew the brutal pragmatism required in total war. We will exercise restraint where we can, he said carefully. But if any population centers actively resist our operations or attempt to retaliate, they are to be neutralized with maximum prejudice. 
The Federation's military-industrial capabilities are our primary objective here. It was a cold, calculated decision, one that would undoubtedly lead to further loss of life. But the alternative of leaving an actively hostile population at their backs was simply untenable. The Terran Alliance could not afford to fight a two-front war. Make it so, Briggs stated flatly, and prepare for our next target assault. I want to keep the Federation off balance and hit them again before they can marshal a counterattack. As his crew hurried to carry out his orders, the captain turned his gaze back to the nightmarish vista on the view screens. The once gleaming colony had been transformed into a smoldering abattoir, its cities and industrial centers obliterated in an unholy firestorm. Bile rose in Briggs's throat as the true scope of the massacre sank in. He had known there would be civilian casualties, had steeled himself for that grim reality. But actually witnessing the extent of the carnage they had wrought was almost too much. These weren't just numbers on a casualty report or abstract collateral damage projections. These had been living, breathing people, alien, but undoubtedly just as vibrant and hopeful as any human. Entire generations and cultures had been scoured from existence in the blink of an eye. For a moment, Briggs was gripped by the nearly overwhelming urge to call it all off, to order his ships to disengage and find a way to make peace with the Federation, no matter how unpalatable the terms. Anything to stop this escalating spiral of violence before it consumed them all in a tide of atrocity. But just as quickly as the doubts surfaced, he ruthlessly quashed them down. The Federation had brought this reckoning upon themselves through their hubris and injustice. Humanity would not be subjugated or denied its rightful place among the stars any longer. No, there could be no turning back, not after the lines they had crossed today. The Terran Alliance would press on, shattering the Federation's military might world by world until their arrogant leaders had no choice but to capitulate. Only then could a lasting peace finally be forged between their peoples one built on mutual respect and the acknowledgement of human sovereignty, not oppressive dominion. Squaring his shoulders, Briggs turned his gaze outward towards the distant glimmers of their next targets. More tragedy and sacrifice undoubtedly awaited them on that path, but it was a necessity, the birth pangs of a new galactic order where humanity would reign supreme as the preeminent force, an order paid for in the fires of their fury against those who would deny them.